first heard about this project through Kickstarter. Um, once I heard that the main one of the main writers or designer for this project also did Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and Nice of the Old Republic, I'm a huge fan of the stories of those games. I uh, loved them years ago. Um, and um, I was very happy to back this project. Definitely. Uh, so we received the PDFs. Um, we're still waiting for the, the actual physical copies to come in, but I figured we'll give you uh, a quick jump or a quick look into what this these books are about. There's a lowdown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, would you like to go first? What are, what are your thoughts? So it comes with, we received the player's guide. Yep. Class options, I, I'm very happy that uh, they were able to give each different already made class a unique archetype that was related to Greek mythology, but also Greek history in a way. Um, so, uh, and the idea that normal people could be demigods in this and like re besides just being level 20 demigods but being that mm -hmm. growing power of a physical magical force in the world um like the barbarians had the herculean class which uh, in general i i love barbarians and i don't think they see enough cool stuff except now with the new homebrew that's out um they don't, <laughs> they, don't, they, don't uh, they don't ever get enough stuff um but like finally giving uh, barbarians a way to use ranged weapons by letting longbows use strength, or um, mm. the demigod sorcerer class that lets you uh, have a legendary resistance, which mm. <laughs> which gives you that one moment of like, oh no, someone's gonna feeble mind me. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for me it was all about the different um, character options there, and it, they um, uh, Dragon Lords really delivered. I won't touch into the magic too much because it's nice to have that surprise of learning those yes. new spells, but having those things that are very fate-centric, very very, uh, very focused on a different way of doing magic that you don't normally get with uh, the average spells that you get with uh, like the, player, the player's handbook and stuff, it's nice little add-ons. Um, another thing that I really loved was um, for characters to have the, they had a, a, a fame table. So as you grew in infamy or for me, is there a positive, is infamy positive, negative, or both? <laughs> uh, it depends who it is. <laughs> I guess. Um, but it, I really like the table of fame because, you know, you can start off, you know, you know you're know, you level five, and in normal campaigns, people know your name a little bit. But now, because you're considered a hero, like specifically a hero, there are people leave sacrifices to you, not sacrifices, leave tribute to you. Uh, there's plays about you when you get to a certain high enough level where they're showing off your great victories. And mm. like people are writing uh, books about you. Like it, It's just a great way to make your characters feel an investment in the world and the people around you because these people worship you for a reason because you've mm. done great things. And it's like, well, I want to keep doing great things because one, I want them to worship me or maybe... You know, I just want them to not die. <laughs> they had some unique races. Oh yes, they, they, they have um, they have like a, at least five new ones. They have the Minotaur, the Gorgon, Sirens, uh, Satyrs, the Nymphs too. Nymphs, yes. Uh -huh. Explain a little bit about the world. Um, if you've seen the original Clash of the Titans, if you watched the Jason the Argonauts, <laughs> uh, that's what this world feels like. Um, so if you always wanted to play something di different than Forgotten Realms. And you want something that has that flavor. Um, uh, this is the perfect yeah. thing for it. Uh, the uh, the adventure book for um, Odyssey and the Dragon Lords is, is great. It has uh, tons of epic adventures. Um, you could just go in there and pick and choose what you want to yeah. do. Um, the maps are fantastic. The treasures are just as fantastic. Uh, the world building is great. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, it's it's not. It is like Greek mythology, but they're not using Greek mythology. Probably because Greek mythology is very problematic. Yeah. You know, you, you got you got your Greek gods that are pretty much rapists, and murderers, and yeah, all these horrible. Not, not the they're best people much, around. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty much horrible people. So <laughs> they kind of reinvent the Greek mythos yes, in a way. Very you much know? so. They narrowed it to, I believe, it was five main gods for yeah. the biggest group, and then they did still have titans, but the titans are unique as well as opposed to um, ones that we're used to from Greek mythology, which is really. Yeah, pretty much the, the idea is that the, the Titans, pretty much there were the two major gods, um, the uh, the Hundred-Handed One, yep. <laughs> and I believe the Earth, and they had more children that became Titans, and they pretty much used man as pretty much like a food source in a sense. Um, and then the arrival of the Dragon Lords yep. came in and, and gave humanity the strength to fight and develop civilization, and they... Uh, 
of course, Titans were happy with that, caused this huge war, and then the five gods came in and brought peace yep. uh, to the land of peace, <laughs> as much as they could. They helped the world yeah. building. Yeah, I wanted to at least give it that little mention that it was a class yeah. option, because like that people, like Dragon Lords, like anyone who reads that title is going to assume the exact thing that you get, which is, I want to ride a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and like, okay, cool, well, guess yeah. what? You can do it. <laughs> It's an option. No, no, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. I found that interesting that they added that in because I don't think dragons are part of Greek mythology. Uh, Hydra. Yeah. Hydras are. Um, but I don't think there's any flying dragons. No, but that could also be the thing. Like, you know, the Greek the Greek mythos is what's taking over the world in a lot of ways. So, like, the Titans are the Greek mythology that's kind of, like, going around and causing havoc. So maybe this... Um, the dragons are something that are not this Greek, and it's kind of coming in and putting and balancing the world. Yeah, in a way. I don't know. That actually, that makes it sound much more like. <laughs> I wonder if there's like a the, the thought behind it is like kind of like the idea of change. You know, there was this uh, this regime that put humanity down, mm -hmm. and then kind of like Prometheus bringing in the fire. Yeah. Uh, to the humanity, you know, now suddenly humanity has a way of fighting back. Yeah. Against the elements and the, and the titans, and they're they're fighting back and. I wonder if that's we resonate with that because that's how our societies our societies can relate to that in some way and develop in yeah. general. Uh, but I mean, also one thing I would have loved to read, and I don't remember it touching on that, which I would love to actually double check, is see what were dragons beforehand. So did dragons and uh, humanoids come together and decide that yo we got to stop these titans or were dragons? It, it never says. Else? It never says. Okay. They, they just say that uh, the dragon lords came in with their bronze dragons and. Um, uh, gave these tools to humanity so that, to fight back. So that's fun, just because like that's a that's a like did the dragon lords come from somewhere else and come here, or did they, or was it literally dragons who are always intelligent, or at least by like the later uh, stages are usually insanely intelligent. With insanely intelligent beings, we're like, yeah. yo, we need to just stop this, or we're all going to die. <laughs> yeah, and it makes you wonder how much like is everything's gonna seep in into this world like what if um let's see what's what's very forgotten realms um drow drow like they don't talk about drow here no they don't you know drow, i don't think drow exists in this world they, they also didn't mention a lot I, 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 again that's something i have to double check is i don't know if you're allowed the option i mean you're probably allowed yeah. you know, especially with dm's approval if you're allowed the option of things like dwarves and elves because they because i don't remember them mentioning it at all it was very much hey you have human but then you have all these other ones so if, if i remember correctly I'll, again, I'll, I'll, I'll double check, but I think dwarves, elves are very, very rare. Yeah. You know, I think dragon are even super rare. Like, like, oh, where are you from? You know, that type of thing. I mean, I mean, it's it's geared. It feels like a, like it really, like human is the thing to be. Yep. You human know? or and, any and, of the and other new races. The, the sub races. But can you imagine being a dragonborn, but then also being a dragonborn paladin of the dragon lord, where then you have a pseudo dragon, and then you have a dragon, so you're a dragon with a dragon and a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> treasure hunt you can there's, there's a lot of political intrigue yep. and, uh, and of course uh, gods and titans are very fickle yeah. fickle beings and then even with just like the laws of the world uh there's one in the there's a section that says laws of uh, thelia 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 uh and there's a section in laws of thelia where there is um something called uh guest friendship um mm. so if you have a guest over, even if it's a mortal enemy of yours, you treat them with respect. Like, this is what you would assume in a lot of, like, situations, but uh, unless you want, like, a red wedding situation. Um, <laughs> but it's very much, you, no matter what, when you have a guest in your house, you treat them with respect. There's no fighting, there's no backlash, there's no uh, uh, negative intrigue of some sort with that person. So you sit, you have a meal together, you treat your other with respect, the guest gives you a gift, and then once they leave the house, you can be enemies again. But it's that thing where if you your characters need to know this rule because if they walk into a house of someone they plan on killing and their guests they need to know that they're they could get cursed they could have the world itself or the area itself turn against them because they were uh, negligible to laws that surround the whole world um, but yeah I just like those little details where it's like it's real world but it's just different enough where like you <laughs> there's consequences for certain actions that you don't always expect so the adventure book is broken up into 12 chapters 12 uh, amazing adventures uh the first one uh dealing with your typical um prophetic calling to adventure and with the last one being a a huge um battle royal of, of craziness with titans and and dragons and all sorts of things the appendix section has a lot of great information it's over 100 pages long 
uh, with information about the playable races, new spells, uh, monsters, encounters, treasures, uh, understanding what dragon lords are. Uh, I didn't talk too much about the um, actual quests themselves. I wanted to bring up a couple of them because there is a great labors part. So some mm -hmm. people who really love uh, Greek mythos might be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the apocalypsis, which led the basically the end of the world at the end of the game. Yeah. Where you're taking down titans. Like, and I, want, I wanted to bring that up. But again, I, I don't oh, know what's... I didn't realize there's was, there was a chapter called the Tarask. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, so basically that section there is all the titans that you got to fight. And that's crazy. They're like, yeah, Tarask, that's the first of the four. What? Why is the Tarask the first of the four? <laughs> <laughs> that's scary. Yeah, exactly. Oof. Yeah. Um, but they they give stuff from what I can see by the end of this assuming four party team because that's what like normal things are you're over level 20 by the end of this or you yeah. just have some really insane magic items because there's there's some crazy stuff I don't know how far you read but I read the last chapter in the last fight you do it's insane mm. <laughs> I haven't read the last chapter I, I mean, I'm just surprised I'm just looking at it now like the chapter Tarrasque, oh crap yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. If you've wanted to face probably the most difficult beast that they made in D&D, <laughs> <laughs> the thing that reflects magic back at you and is impervious to most damage is great. Wow. <laughs> oh, that, that actually makes me more excited. I kind of wish I could play this. Just because I, I, I haven't faced, played, I haven't met too many DMs that want to do like high level crazy stuff. Uh, I, like, I feel like they shy away from like using dragons and terrasks mm. and I'm like, bring them on. I, so, I want to... But yeah, give me give me an army of beholders. Give me something exciting. So my know? first DM with my favorite character, uh, who to this day is one of the, like my favorite characters I've ever made. Um, first fight, first like big fight we had was against a young black dragon. Mm -hmm. We were like level three, <laughs> and the <laughs> final fight we were all gods. We all became demigods or gods basically, and we were fighting against basically an unspeakable evil god. And, like, our end result to balance things out, quote-unquote balance things out, is we didn't know how to balance it well, so we were like, just add a zero to each of your uh, scores. <laughs> and, like, so we were fighting with incredibly insane numbers, and it was, it was just crazy. Mm -hmm. It was great. But, like, I, lo I love high stakes. Overall, I think um, I'm very happy with the two books. Definitely. Uh, again, I can't wait to get the physical copies when they come in. Yeah. Um, that so that artwork. Work and, <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I, I can't give this enough praise it's, it's fantastic yeah, you know uh, I mean it's, it's every those two books are everything you need to really just have fun at this these set of adventures you know if you love Percy Jackson yeah. um, <laughs> but you know not in the modern world sense but like you know if you love just Greek mythology if, in general if Greek, Greek gets you going and you just really want to uh, get that feel yeah so yeah definitely check this out I don't think it's on sale yet I once it's out once we there's a link available I'll try to put in the description below so you can find it if you're interested in purchasing it so uh, yeah yeah um thank you for any last words uh we didn't get to touch on it a lot but so i'm just going to mention a little bit uh, the paladins do have the new class which is the uh, oath of the dragon lord which is part of the namesake mm. um i won't spoil a lot of it but it's um if you liked the cavalier uh section from fighters if you really enjoy dragons it's mm. it's a very fun class um with a lot of a lot of benefits <laughs> uh but yeah if you have a four person group that wants to do new thing you have enough different races and enough different class archetypes that you can each play twice and still have a unique experience yeah. uh, for what i've seen um but yeah that's all i got <laughs> <laughs> well excellent um thank you very much have a great day Thank you.